Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette and part two of our ironing series. Today, I'll show you how to iron a shirt or a dress shirt for men and women, and I'll share all the tricks with you that I use to get the perfect result. If you haven't checked out part one of our ironing series yet, please check it out here where we discuss all the things you need to iron properly. A dress shirt is the easiest thing to iron in a classic men's wardrobe, and it's the easiest one to begin with when you're just getting into ironing. It may surprise you, but it all starts in the laundry room. A proper prep work is essential to get it right. The higher the spin cycle on your machine, the more wrinkles you will get. So keep that in mind when you launder your shirts in the first place. When you take them out of the machine, they're still wet, and ideally this is a good time to smooth out the wrinkles. Now in theory, you're ready to iron. For the most efficient way, always iron a number of shirts at the same time, because a lot of effort goes into prep work and you can save time on a per shirt basis the more shirts you iron. Now should or should you not use a dryer? The big advantage of the dryer is that it helps to release wrinkles and it makes ironing easier. On the other hand, the huge disadvantage is that 99.99% of shirts have a glued interlining, either in the collar or the cuffs or in the placket. A dryer is very hard on those interlinings and chances for it to blister and come undone are much higher the more often you dry it. Because of that, personally, I never put shirts in my dryer and I'll urge you to never put your high-end shirts in the dryer either because it will ruin your investment. So should you iron your shirts when they're still wet? The answer is yes and no. Yes, because if they're damp and not soaking wet, it's easier to iron them. At the same time, it will take more time because the cold water has to be heated up and evaporated by your iron. Personally, I'll try to find a good middle ground so it's not too wet, but also not dry. If you happen to have a dry shirt, I suggest you spray it with a spray bottle of water, then put it in a plastic bag for about 10 to 15 minutes, let it sit there, that way it can moisten up and ironing will be much easier on you. Shirts that are hard to iron are prone to wrinkling and waves, which are unsightly, and I'll show you how to get rid of them. First of all, lay out all your equipment. At the minimum, you need the ironing board. If you are right-handed, your ironing board should face the tip to the left. Now check the label of your shirt and turn the iron to the proper temperature. Usually they have settings based on a material such as linen, cotton, polyester, or nylon blends. Cotton requires a relatively high temperature, but if you have a poly blend shirt, make sure you lower the setting, otherwise it will ruin your shirt. Two, make sure everything is clean. Look at the shirts to see if there are any recent stains, because if you iron them now, the heat will set in the stain and it will be much harder to remove it than if you take action right away. Also make sure the ironing board cover is clean and there are no stains on the bottom of the ironing sole. What I've seen sometimes is that there's plastic from plastic buttons or some dirt, and if you iron with a hot iron on the shirt, you will set the stain in for good. Three, add water. You definitely want a steam iron and that requires water. I suggest you go with distilled water because it is not hard water, but soft water, meaning it has fewer minerals such as calcium and magnesium, and that can cause your iron to clog up and you'll get a grayish whitish substance onto your shirts that will also cause stains. If you live in an area where the water is soft and you can tell by looking for example at your shower head and if there's no residue you can also use it right in your iron. Also make sure there's water in your spray bottle because the mist it produces is much finer and much better suited to ironing than the spray head that's usually built into an iron. Once your iron has reached a proper temperature it's time to go. Keep in mind that it's much easier to iron and you get much better results if you use a professional grade vacuum table. And to learn more about that, please check out part one of this series. Five, start with pressing the cuffs and the sleeves. No matter whether it's a barrel cuff or a French cuff, I start ironing on the inside of the cuff. Once that's done, I look at the outside. If there's still some wrinkles, I iron again. Always make sure to iron from the outside of the cuff in, otherwise you'll get little wrinkles by the stitching, especially on shirts with a sewn interlining. It can be quite frustrating, but practice pays off. Once I'm on the cuff, it's time to iron the sleeve. If you just have a regular ironing board, I suggest to lay down the sleeve flat, because at this stage, you're ironing two layers at the same time. If you don't do it right, you'll get wrinkles, and it'll take you much longer. It really pays to have a system here. I always start in a corner of the armpit, then I iron the middle parts, and not the top edge, because that will leave a crease. I also always start in the back side, and once I'm done, I flip it over to the front side and repeat the motion. Try to iron in the middle part, and when you're done, you can add a crease on top. If you like a strong crease, you can now add the clapper, which is a piece of wood that really helps to get a strong crease in it. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the crease, and because of that, I use a sleeve board. 
The big advantage of the sleeve board is that the results are much nicer, you'll have fewer wrinkles, and you have no crease all the way around. I start by pulling the sleeve of the sleeve board so the seam is on top. Now I work my way around until I get to the seam again and I've ironed everything. Most dress shirts have one or more pleats sewn onto the cuff to create more volume for your sleeve, and the sleeve board really helps you to get nice creases in the exact length that you want. A key to success in ironing is not to use broad motions all over the place, but short, controlled movements that have enough pressure. As you may know, ironing is also known as pressing, and that's because you have to press down. You can see me going back and forth with my iron because I have two pointed ends. If you have just one pointed end, you have to always go in a direction with a point. Otherwise, you'll end up with wrinkles in the shirt. Once you're done with one sleeve, move on to the next cuff and sleeve. It doesn't matter which one you start with. Six, press the collar and the yoke. First of all, you flip up your collar and you remove any collar stays if that's possible. If they're sewn in, just leave them in there. Now I iron from one side to the middle, I stop, and go to the other side and iron again to the middle. Avoid ironing from the inside out or in one motion because it'll create wrinkles. Because the collar has so many layers, you may have to go over it once more simply to get the right result. Once you're done with the underside of the collar, flap it open so you're now ironing the outside of the collar. Again, outside to the middle from one side and outside to the middle from the other side. If you have a collar with sewn interlining, it can be a little more tricky. Try to pull the fabric so it stays flat, especially along the stitched seams. Again, use short strokes and not bold long motions. Now, some people like to fold the collar back down and iron on top of it so it gets its natural shape. If you want a soft roll collar, especially on top, or if you have removable collar stays, I suggest you skip that step. Once your collar is done, it's time for the yoke. Most ironing boards have a perfect shape to iron one side of the yoke at a time. Make sure the yoke lays flat, and then with short motions, iron it nice and flat. Move on to the middle, iron the middle of the yoke, and then go on and move on to the other side of the yoke. The technique is the same. While you do that though, make sure you don't iron deep wrinkles into the back of your shirt. If you do, it's not the end of the world because we iron that at a later stage. The order in which I iron is well thought through, so don't skip it up, otherwise you end up with a more wrinkly shirt. Once you're done with the collar and the yoke, it's time to finish the body. First, I'll let the buttons on the board and iron it from the back. That way I can go all the way in one nice clean motion to make sure there are no wrinkles. Now flip the shirt so the buttons face up. If you have a solid shirt, you can quickly go into the areas in between the buttons. If you have a striped shirt, I suggest to simply tap down your iron, lift it up, move to the next section, tap down again, and so forth. I do this because otherwise your lines will become wavy and it'll show on the front of the shirt. Most iron boards are shaped so they're slimmer at the end and so you can lay the shirt down and pull it flat. Once I've done that, I start in the direction of the pattern, if it's a stripe, in a stripe pattern, from the bottom to the top. Since the front of your shirt is the most visible part, you want to make sure it looks extra clean and neat. Make sure the area around the armhole is neat, as well as the area on top next to the collar. If you happen to iron a grease, flatten it out, spray some water on top of it, either with the iron or with your spray bottle, and go over it again. In case your shirt has a pocket, that can be tricky to iron. Make sure you pull it flat, iron it separately in short strokes. If there's excess fabric, you can avoid creases by ironing along them, never across them. The pointed tip of your iron comes in very handy here, just like in every area where there is a little corner. Because most irons don't have steam holes right in the tip of the iron, it pays to separately steam them or use some water that is sprayed on. At the end of the day, you want a nice smooth result, especially along the seams. Once the button front of the shirt is done, I move on to the back. It's the same procedure again. I start on one side and pull it flat so I can then start to iron. If the shirt has pleats in the back, align the pleat and iron over it so it looks neat and exactly the way you want. If you have a handmade shirt, especially an Italian one, chances are it has grinze along the seam of the yoke and the back. To get them to look right, use the iron in short strokes pointing towards the yoke seam and you want that wavy effect. That's part of the craftsmanship and the handwork and it's not a defect or something that you can eliminate by ironing. When you're with one side of the back, slightly rotate it over the board and keep ironing the middle and then the other side. At this time, I also check the yoke on top and see if there are any wrinkles, I can go over it again. And voila, now you're done. Simply pull the shirt off the board, put it in a hanger and button the top button or sometimes the top two buttons if you have a big collar. 
Now you can just hang it in your closet and your shirt is ready to go next time you need it. As I mentioned before, because of all the time it needs to set up, it really pays to iron all your shirts at once. If you enjoyed this guide, give us a thumbs up, hit that little bell so videos like this come right to your inbox and stay tuned for part three where we talk about ironing dress pants. If you want to see how I iron a dress shirt from start to finish, step by step from different angles with all the intricate details without being rushed, please watch this video here. In today's video, I'm wearing a more relaxed outfit which is ideal for ironing. It consists of a pressed dress shirt which is striped in blue and white cotton. I'm using barrel cuffs, not French cuffs, because that way that won't interfere with the ironing. I'm wearing a pair of navy blue denim with a brown crocodile belt and a silver buckle, which works well with my silver and carnelian ring. The shoes are antique brown penny loafers and they work well with the belt. My socks consist of a red and blue. They're shadow striped socks from Fort Belvedere, which you can find in our shop here. They tie together the shoes, the jeans, as well as the ring I'm wearing.